once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volumes of forgotten lore. While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this, and nothing more. Ah, I remember. Distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Belmore, for the rare and radiant maiden Nameless here, forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance." at my chamber door. This it is, and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger. Hesitating then no longer, sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so gently you came tapping, tapping, at my chamber door that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door. Darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, the norm. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, the norm. Merely this sound and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning. Soon again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what their act is and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment and this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter when, with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he. Not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with main, lord or lady, perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace, just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven. Ghastly, grim, and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore, tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marvel this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning little relevancy more, for we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber door, with such name as nevermore. But the reader, sitting lonely on the pallid bust, spoke only that one word as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing farther than he uttered, not a 
feather bed, he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes had flown before. And then the bird said, nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, doubtless said I, what in others is its only stock and store. Caught from some unhappy master, whom unmerciful disaster followed fast, and followed faster, till his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore, of never, never more. But the raven, still beguiling all my fancy into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door, then upon the velvet sinking took myself to linking fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly gaunt and ominous bird of yore meant in creaking nevermore. This I sat engaging, this I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat dividing with my head at ease reclining, on the cushions veiled, on the cushions velvet lining, that the lamplight glowed it all, but whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight glowing more, she shall press ah, nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by paraffin, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee, by these angels he hath sent thee, respite, respite, and nepenthe thee from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, oh, quaff this kind nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, Thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempest set or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted on this desert land, enchanted, on this home, thy horror haunted, tell me truly thy implore. Is there, is there often in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I am poor. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, Thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow lean within the distant gain, it shall clasp a sainted maiden with an angel's name alone. Clasp a rare and radiant maiden with the angel's name alone. Quoth the raven. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked of starting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallid bust of the palace just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming towards his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow flies, floating on the floor, shall be lifted.